Hey guys and welcome back to my garage. Today we're going to be putting the new Edelbrock carburetor on the old Mopar. So stay tuned. So for those of you who are new to my channel and don't know what the old Mopar is, well it's the 79 Chrysler Cordoba that is sitting right behind me. It's covered in about a year's worth of dust because I parked it last fall and it really hasn't moved since other than moving from where I had it stored over here to its present location. The idea of getting it over here was, well, I was going to be driving Dale, so I didn't need all that parking space, but we're going to try and get some seats installed to the interior and, well, we didn't get very far. but. In the process of building the new engine for Dale, I had to purchase a new carburetor because, well, I stole the carb off of this to put on Dale so I could drive him. Today, we're gonna to be installing a new Edelbrock carburetor, the AVS-2, it's a 1906 650 CFM, which, in my opinion, I believe this car needs more CFM. You talk to a lot of the old Mopar guys who are true blue believers in the old thermal quads that used to come on them, they say they ran about 750, 800 CFM, even on a 360 or a 318 because these engines want air. Um, when we took it to the dyno, and I will put that link right up here, you'll see that we were limited on the actual horsepower, and I believe it's because the engine was choking. It was uh, not getting enough air. There's no reason why this engine, being built the way it is, with the heads and the cam and the exhaust and everything that I've got on it, shouldn't be pulling probably about a 250, 275 rear wheel horsepower on a dyno and we were only hitting about 218 or 219, I forget what it was. Anyways, today we're installing that carb, so let's get started. Okay, so let's get this thing dug out of the box. I've already had it out, so we've got our installation instructions and in here there's a CD and some stickers, which will go on the toolbox more than likely. And it comes with some gaskets, which we're probably not going to need because everything is already on the car. It also comes with some plugs and, uh, and everything that we're going to need that way. But this is what we want. Right there. So this is our 650 CFM Edelbrock AVS-2, and they call it a Thunder Series. Um, this is what dad has on his 36 Dodge. He thinks he doesn't like it, but I think that uh, having that extra CFM on that 340 is probably what's doing it good. We've also got an, an aluminum spacer. I know a lot of guys like to go with phenolic spacers, but uh, I'm going with the aluminum. And it also came with uh, these uh, gaskets as well. So we shouldn't have too much heat soaking going on. If we do, then uh, we can change it out. But we're going to try it with this first. So. Let's uh, get over to the car and get this installed. So without any instructions on this adapter, not like you really need instructions, but you gotta figure out, they only give you bolts that are so long, so you've either gotta use them to mount to the carburetor or mount to the intake. So what I figured out is that you put the bolts in like this, you mount that down to the intake, using these Allen head bolts down like so and then you set the carburetor on top of this and use the washers and nuts that are provided to tighten that down. So let's get over to the car and get this set on there and then we can start putting things together. All right, so now that we've got that secure, we can go grab our other gasket, put it down here, and then sandwich that with the carburetor. Okay, so now that we've physically got the carburetor installed on the intake, we now have to hook up our linkages. So we've got our kick down cable, we've got our throttle cable, and we've got our non-existent cruise control cable that we're still going to hook up because we want it to be there. Anyways, I've got all these pieces sitting up here, 
and there's an actual ball that comes with the new carburetor for that accelerator pedal to clip onto. So let's get that stuff on and then we'll be ready to start this thing. Okay, so we've got this little ball, which is the receiving end or the male end of the kick down cable, which kind of just snaps into place. So that's going to connect right here. So we're just going to slide that into the hole and lock it in there with our nut and lock washer. And that's a 3 8 in the front, 5 16 in the back. Vice versa. 3 8 in the back, 5 16 in the front. And then the kick down cable just kind of snaps in place. There's that. And then we've got our throttle cable. which is going to come up here. Which way did we have that before? I can't remember if it was on the inside or the other side. That might have been on the inside like so. And that's where this little adapter comes into play. So we'll get that unscrewed and snapped into place as well. And that hole seems to be a little bit too big compared to what was on it before. So we got to go find some washers. Be right back. All right, so we found some washers that are going to work. So we're just going to kind of fish that back through here. Put that on. And then we can tighten that up. Should be good, now we can hook up our cable. Okay, so we've got all of our cables hooked up here. We've got our throttle return spring, and we've got our brake booster vacuum, as well as our vacuum advance over here. I put a plug on the manifold vacuum over here because we're not running anything off of it right now. And in the back, I do have to run a PCV valve uh, but I don't have any hose here for it, so for now I'm just going to block it off in the back of the carburetor until I can find the nipple to put in there, and then we'll run a hose into that. So that'll be at a later time. But for now, so that we can actually get this thing started, I'm just going to put the plug in it, and then we're ready to start. Okay, so we've got everything hooked up, and I also didn't mention in the previous clip that uh, we had the fuel line here and the choke here. So we did have to wire up the choke, with which uh, that wire was already there. Fuel line is there and we are ready to roll with one exception. I'm missing a plug wire. So I'm going to go steal a plug wire off of Dale and then we can get this thing started. So if you're wondering why we were missing a plug wire, it's because when I had a misfiring issue with Dale, I wanted to see if it was the plug wires because on that cylinder number four that we had the trouble with, before I really knew what was going on, I thought it was misfiring when in fact it was, but it wasn't the plug wire. So I stole one off of this and I think I might have left it at work. Question is, is it going to work? Because these holes are a lot bigger. And it ain't going to work. So, we can do one of two things. We can wait till my new plug wire set shows up which is probably Monday, or we can try and run it on seven cylinders. Seven cylinders it is. Okay, so Ju Junior's inside. He's going to control the key. I'm going to control the throttle out here, and we'll see what it's going to take to get this thing running. Okay, go ahead. Hold it. Can't have that run up against the alternator. Okay, try her again. Take a while for this thing to fill up. Go ahead. So 
even on seven cylinders, it starts right up and it actually runs fairly smooth. That's the benefit of having a V8 is that when you lose one cylinder, you're losing less percentage of spark compared to like a four cylinder where you lose 25% of your spark when one coil goes bad. So anyways, it's working. We're gonna get this thing uh, with new plug wires here in the very near future. And then we're gonna get it, uh, get the seats back in it, get it out to the shop, cleaned up and go for a ride. So we're about ready to close out this video. So that's going to do it for this video. I hope you guys stay tuned and we will get that car cleaned up and back on the road again. And uh, Junior says he wants to get out and do some polls with it against Dale to see, well, which one performs better or maybe seems to be faster. So those are going to be some future videos for the old Mopar and Dale. Guys, also, I'm putting the call back out for the submit your ride challenge. As you guys know, in the previous video, I asked for you guys to submit me a video two minutes at maximum of your ride. I only got two submissions. So I'm hoping to get at least half a dozen so I can put a video together and then I will highlight your ride on my channel for everyone to see. So guys, stay focused on the windshield, not the rearview mirror. I love you, God bless. And don't forget, Car Guy and Six Fan Show premiering in just a couple of weeks. Stuck on high idle.